Welcome to Unleash the Awesome with Dave Gambrill. All of us have unique skills, talents, and abilities that aren't being used to their full potential. Our mission is to share the people, tools, apps, and other resources that will help you unleash your awesome on the world. Yo, what's up? It's Dave. Welcome to another episode of Unleash the Awesome. Today, let's talk about you have the power. You have the power. As I was thinking about this, I was thinking about a cartoon I used to watch when I was little, He-Man, and he would say, by the power of Grayskull, I have the power, right? And he would always channel the power that he knew was available to him, but he had this little thing that he had to do to kind of turn that power on. And the purpose of this podcast episode today is really just for me to remind you that you have the power. You have the power to control your future, your destiny, and there's never been a better time in the history of the world for you to create something that is powerful, serves a lot of people, can serve a lot of people across the planet, and get you paid handsomely in return for doing that. Right? So I think about you know most people, especially if you grew up in the United States, and listen, don't mishear this or misquote this. This is not a knock on teachers, okay? I love teachers. Teachers are the, one of the most important professions out there, and teachers should get paid more than they do. But the educational system, the way it was set up, at least in the United States, and the way it currently exists with minor, very minor modifications over a hundred years, is it was created for creating employees for uh, during the industrial revolution, right? It was like, let's train people to be good employees. So let's put them into the school system. Let's teach them how to read, write, and get them into a factory or a warehouse or something where they could just be good employees, right? And then we started to have more white collar type jobs, information type jobs, and then it pivoted a little bit to serve that audience, right? But it really hasn't changed a lot since then. Now I get it, there are schools that teach entrepreneurial skills and things like that. And our public school actually here, where my kids went, and I actually went myself, which is kind of weird coming full circle like that, uh, is really awesome and really progressive as it relates to that. There's all kinds of things you can learn there from the, you know, the automotive skills and the the beautician skills and all the stuff that they've had for years, but they do also have, you know, entrepreneurial think tank courses and things like that. So they have definitely evolved a little bit, but the majority of it still, the framework of it is still set up to teach the basics, to have people go to college, get a degree, and then get a job. And what happens when you do that? And listen, there's nothing against that. If that's the path you've taken, great. That's what a lot of us did. That's what I did when I first started on this path, and that's served me really well to a point. But what tends to happen over time is you tend to forget that you have the power, right? You don't necessarily need somebody else to pay you. You don't necessarily need somebody else to give you a job. You don't necessarily have to earn that from somebody else. There are ways now, probably more than ever in the history of the world, for you to create a sustainable, living, probably a thriving income or revenue stream for you and your family. And even if you just, and here's a cool thing, you could do it on the side while you're working full time, right? It used to be like, kind of against the rules to be moonlighting and have a side hustle. I think it, it's gone the other way now where it's kind of weird if you don't have a additional revenue stream or a side hustle or something, right? Whether people are selling, you know, back in the day, and I guess they, they still do, Tupperware and Avon and Mary Kay and stuff like that, direct sales and multiple marketing. But now through the power of the internet and lots of the technology that we have, social media, you don't even need big marketing campaigns and big companies like that. And you don't really even need a physical product. You could create digital products, which the reason why I love them is, one, there's a niche out there for you to serve. Just about every niche needs some kind of digital product, a course, a membership, something to help them solve their problems. It could be in niches like health, wealth, and relationships, like really big things where there's a lot of money that changes hands and those are a little bit easier to get a foothold in, but it could also be things like hobbies and smaller niches and like not just gardening, but inside gardening, maybe gardening in a specific geographic area. And then inside that, maybe just doing a specific kind of gardening, like just a handful of different plants or flowers or fruits or whatever, vegetables. And maybe even drilling down inside that even smaller. So because of the internet, people can search these things. There are so many problems out there that people have that there is not a nicely packaged solution for them. So you could literally just create an inexpensive thing, like a $27 PDF ebook or something like that, 
And I have seen time and time again where something like that in the right niche positioned the right way not only serves a lot of people, but I've seen people make multiple seven, eight figures with really their only product being a $27 ebook or a PDF, right? So I, like, I'm doing this stuff myself and I have digital products and I put them out there and right, I have this podcast episode and I've, you know, I've been online for a while and I have a, an email list and I promote things through there and I have my own courses and stuff like that and I have affiliate relationships, but that's the other thing. You don't even really need to have your own thing. Like if you build an audience around a certain niche, around a certain problem, around a certain situation, and you build relationships with other people in that niche that are solving problems instead of worrying about competition, which again is something we're taught in school, right? It's me against you. We're and then, you know, we're ranked in school. <clears throat> Who's the valid valedictorian, the person who had the best grades, right, overall? And then everybody's ranked and you have a class rank and then you go to college and same kind of thing. And then if you want to get into certain clubs or whatever, you need to have a certain GPA, a certain class rank. And then when you go into businesses they force rank you to see what kind of raises you're going to get which is kind of silly but we could talk about that some other episode right so you get this whole thing of like competition but when you get in the entrepreneurial space and you find people that need help and they need answers you'll find that it makes more sense to partner with people right i'm actually going to a thing next week and i'm sure i'll talk about it on an upcoming episode or on social media or whatever i can't really talk about it now but a lot of people a bunch of us are going to this event and ultimately, if you were to look at it, you'd say we're all going there to learn how to get better at doing something because we're going to help launch something next year, being about as vague as that can be. And and so, yeah, we're going to be competing against each other in some way, but like we're all voluntarily going to this thing and we're taking our time and we're you know investing in the travel to get there and staying in a hotel and all this other stuff to learn from each other and teach each other and mastermind each other and partner with each other on how to get better at serving our audience with this unique thing that we're going to bring to the marketplace. All right, so even in situations where it seems like there's a lot of competition and and you don't have a product yet or you don't have a course yet or you don't have a $27 ebook or whatever, you can partner with other people. And if you have that audience, if you've helped people, maybe you've written a blog or you have a newsletter or an email list or something, podcasts, social media following, or you're into this one very specific thing. And then there's other people out there in the market. So something that just popped into my head because it's, I think it's easy to explain and I have some background in it. So think about, you know, for sports, right? There's trainers for sports and there's coaches for sports and then there's sports specific coaches. And then they have trainers and sports specific coaches that go all the way down to middle school, which I think is a little bit of overkill. Um, but there's even specialization inside that. So I think about the sport of lacrosse, you have people who play offense, people who play a combination position of offense and defense, people who play defense, and then goalies, right? Everybody knows what a goalie is. Uh, and so there's like camps and instruction and, and courses online and stuff for lacrosse in general, but there's also goalie camps and goalie workouts and things specifically for goalies. So even inside a sport like lacrosse, which is one of the fastest growing sports, there is you know a lot of opportunity there. And then there's people that are doing goalie camps and clinics and instruction and stuff. There are people that do it specifically for face-offs. Face-offs, while are, they're a small part of the game, they can actually have a big impact on the game, right? After, at the beginning of every uh, quarter and uh, after every goal is scored, there's a face-off to determine who's gonna take possession of the ball. So that's kind of critical, especially if, it's going to be a low scoring or a ball control type game, right? So there are face-off camps and there's dudes who've made a living out of not only being a really good face-off person in lacrosse themselves, but then they teach their techniques and their fundamentals or whatever. And they, listen, they partner with other people that they compete against on the field to create this content and these courses and these camps and all that stuff. So I'm sharing all this with you to impress upon you that there are things that you could be doing that are probably not things that you currently do. So you probably went to school, got a degree, got a job in something that has nothing to do with your degree. And now you've been doing whatever your job is for a while. And there's something that you really love or a hobby or something you're really good at that you're not really spending a lot of time with. But I'm telling you, you could monetize something in that thing that you really love in your passion, whatever that is. And it's really not that hard. One of the things I recommend you do, go listen to an episode of the podcast. I'll put the link in the show notes. I don't remember what the episode number was, but I did an episode on how to do like free market research and how to think about 
drilling down into a niche, right? So you think about something and I tell you how to use YouTube and Amazon and some of the reviews that they have on Amazon and stuff like that, but then go into these other sites like Answer the Public and putting in some of the keywords that you discover in the reviews of these books and all this other stuff. And, and then you start to see some common themes and you can go to Google Trends and some other things and you can see that inside this niche, right? And then if you niche down or niche down even further, uh, you will see that people keep having a problem around this thing or this question comes up a lot. And there's not a lot of people answering it. You want some people to be answering it. You want some people to be solving the problem because that means there's actually a problem there and people are probably paying money to solve it. You don't want to have a totally blue ocean because you'll drown, right? You kind of want to have what my friend Steve Larson calls a purple ocean. So there's a little bit of blood in the water, right? The sharks are feeding a little bit, but there's still plenty of opportunity there. And, and so I, I know when you get in your career and you're doing all this corporate stuff and you go down that path and then you buy a house and you have a mortgage and you have kids and you have pets and you're coaching your kids in sports and you're going to church on the weekends, and like you get caught up in this whole thing and it goes on for years and years and years and you're just trying to climb the corporate ladder, you tend to forget that you have the power. You have a lot of transferable skills that you're doing in your nine to five job that you could take and deploy into a side hustle. And here's the thing. You, yeah, there's going to be some hustle and grind up front, but that shouldn't be the end game. Yeah, you're going to have to work a little bit. Yeah, you're going to have to hustle. Yeah, you're probably going to have to learn a thing or two that you don't already know. But through the power of Google and things like this podcast where I'm giving you a lot of the answers, you should be able to get to a spot a little bit faster where you can start monetizing something. And you can beta test it. You could do what my friend Stu McLaren calls a founding members launch. You can get something out there in the marketplace with a small group of people. My friend Jeff Walker teaches something called the Seed Launch. I'll put a link to his book, Launch, in the show notes for you. And I would read the chapter on Seed Launch if I were you. So you can get these people. You can kind of beta test your idea. You can get people to pay you. You can use something like Zoom to deliver the calls. You record the calls. You start figuring out, hey, really, the people do really want solutions to this. And I have the solution to it and I can help and I have some answers and you start sharing it. And once you start exercising that muscle, for lack of a better term, again, right, you start going, oh, wait, I can do this. I am capable of doing this. I do have the power. Once you see that that's inside you and you have the power to create and you have the power to help people solve problems and that people will pay you to solve their problems, your life will fundamentally change forever. I know that sounds like hyperbole, but it is true. Once you realize, you're like, oh, okay, wait, they have this problem and I can create this thing. Cool. And you do it and you solve the problem. And maybe you don't make a ton of money. Maybe make a couple hundred bucks, but that's a couple hundred more than you had before. And that was kind of my journey. I'm not going to bore you with my whole path now, but you know, like I was working full time and I would try something. I was like, oh, cool. And there was really no pressure for me to try any faster because I was working full time and whatever. We were comfortable, which is a dangerous place to be. And then I was like, oh, okay, well, what if I did that again? Or what if I tried it? Or what if I tweaked it a little bit? And, you know, a month or two later, I tried it again. I was like, oh, look at that. I made a couple more hundred dollars. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool. Now I forget about it. And then, I don't know, Christmas would be coming around or something. I'm like, oh, how cool would it be if I could, like, did a webinar or, like, a paid teaching event. And I made, like, a few thousand dollars. And it just essentially paid for Christmas. It just totally offset everything that we would pay for for Christmas, whether we were traveling or for gifts for the family or for gifts for everybody else or for, I don't know, philanthropy, charity stuff that we're doing. What if, you know, I just asked myself the question, what if? And I did a paid event and I was charging people, I don't remember what it was at the time, probably like 47 bucks or something. And like when you get 100 people on a $47 thing, that starts to add up a little bit, you know? And then you're like, oh, what if I did that again? Or what if I put that on autopilot? What if I took that thing and made it like an automated webinar or you know, or a recurring thing that happened and people could come into it and then we can get all the technical aspects of you know, what part of the funnel that is and ADA, which I've talked about before on this podcast and how to kind of move people to your own funnel and then move them up your value ladder on the backside, all that stuff. But like none of that really matters and that's all technical kind of jargon and mumbo jumbo and for a lot of you, you're like, what the hell did you just say? And I get it, but I, I'm saying all this to remind you, you are capable of doing this if you want, but my suggestion would be find something that you're passionate about, find something that you like and start there. 
and because that's a lower risk thing, right? You've heard me probably talk about building a lemonade stand, right? I've mentioned that on episodes before about, you know, people, they get this idea and they're like, oh, I'm going to build this side hustle business. And they get all serious about trying to build like this seven and eight figure thing. And they get frustrated because they can't, they, they get all worried about stuff they shouldn't get worried about. Like, well, I need a business card and I need a logo. And what are my Pantone colors for my logo? And like, none of that matters. Go serve some people and make some money. Like be scrappy. Just go be like, hey, you people have this problem. I think I might have the solution to that problem. Would you pay me 10 bucks to get on a call? Cool. Here's a PayPal button. Click there and I'll, you know, put your email in there when you do it. And I'll, and all this stuff's not going to be automated to start, right? And I'll send you the invite to the Zoom call and we'll record it. And everybody that's on it will get the replay, whatever. And then you're like, wow, wait a second, people paid me, and now I'm figuring out how to do this, and right? And it's not something super serious, and it's not like your your big project, your pie in the sky thing you want to do, but you start realizing that you have the power. And you've heard me teach this before, but right, this is this piece clearly is all about mindset, and that's mostly what this podcast is about. But through utilizing this mindset that I'm talking about you start to build your skill set or realize that you already have this skill set. You're probably hosting Zoom calls or Teams calls or whatever, Microsoft, uh, whatever Google calls their workspace things. Right? You're probably hosting those kind of calls in your work, whatever you're using. You're probably doing it anyway. What if you just did it for yourself at night for an hour? And what originally started this train of thought was, right, then you do it once and then you go, oh, okay, now I know how to do this and people are willing to pay for it. And then you just start to polish it a little bit. Or you start to ask them follow-up questions. This is what Jeff Walker teaches in a seed launch. Okay, now that we've answered those questions, those big questions that you have, like what are the other big questions you have about this? Or now that you know what you know based on our last conversation, what new questions do you have? Right, and you go through that a couple of times and then you almost have a framework for a course. And then you could create a course and you put it out there. And the beauty of something like that is all this stuff I've been talking about is still trading hours for dollars. You're still going to have to be live on those calls and deliver the content and do all that stuff. But it's a way to get paid to do market research. And now you've vetted your idea and you see that people will pay for this. Then you take the time to actually record it and make a course out of it. Maybe, you know, make it a little prettier. Maybe get some people on Fiverr or some other things to help you edit some video or, you know, clean it up, whatever. And then you put it out there and then it just kind of runs and we could talk about the tactics some other time where I can introduce you to all kinds of people that can show you how to do it. But then you just drive traffic to that webinar or to that course or to that thing and you say, hey, you have this problem? I've helped some people solve this problem. Look at these testimonials because you got testimonials from that small group of people. Hey, Dave knows what he's talking about. He really helped me solve this problem. You should listen to him. <laughs> then you go buy the thing, and then people you have people in your course, and so on and so on and so on. And then if you want, you can scale it. But I'm telling you, one, you have the power. And two, when you realize you have the power and you use the power, you get even more powerful. Right? This is like you've heard, you know, use it or lose it. Right. And that's true for our muscles. Right. If you don't use your muscles, your muscles tend to like shrink or atrophy. Same thing holds true for this. Like if you haven't used these things in a while, if you haven't exercised this quote muscle in a while, it's going to be a little rusty. It's not going to be great. You're going to be a little nervous. You're going to be like, oh, what do people think? Right. It doesn't matter what they think. Are they paying your bills? Then it doesn't really matter what they think. Right. All that matters is the people that you're serving are getting served, that they're getting the information that they need. Right? So you reach out to this audience, you serve this audience, and then you scale it if you want. And the cool thing is, even if you wanted to keep your full-time job, you build something like this and you have like an automated webinar or something that runs every Thursday, driving people to your course and people are converting and buying your course that you've already recorded and the webinar is already recorded. There's not a lot of work that you do each week at that point. You're just like, oh, let me go into the marketing thing and make sure the emails are getting sent out on schedule or the follow-up sequences are happening or whatever. And there's people that can show you how to do that. I've shared plenty of the resources on this podcast before. People who can show you how to do that kind of stuff. And if you don't want to do it at that point, if you have money coming in from your side hustle, then pay someone to do it. But at least now you know how to outsource it intelligently. Okay, that's, that's a big mistake people make. They go, I have this idea, I'm going to outsource it. But they don't know what they're outsourcing. So I always recommend that you get your hands dirty you get in there, you do it, you be scrappy, you get up early, you stay up late, you do whatever it takes to like start serving this audience. And then 
you know, if you've listened to me for any period of time, you've heard me refer to the blog post, which I'll put in the show notes for you from Kevin Kelly, 1000 True Fans. Essentially, the, the idea of the blog post, which is a classic, and I reread it a few times a year, but it helps you just with the math around this. You know, if you had a thousand people, right, 1000 true fans who were willing to invest a hundred dollars a year in your thing, right, just let's keep the math simple and not involve taxes and all this other stuff. That's a hundred thousand dollars, a thousand people paying you a hundred dollars a year. Then, okay, so to set something like that up, get it going. Maybe it's not even that. Maybe it's only 20,000 or 25,000, but for a lot of people, $10,000, $15,000 would fundamentally change what they're doing. They could maybe get a better car. Or maybe they could finally have a down payment on a house. Maybe there's like lots of things. Maybe they could go on a 10-day vacation to Hawaii or something. I don't know. But that once you start to see the power of that, then you go, oh, I did it once. Let's do it again. Yep, I did it. did it twice. Let's do it again. Oh, I did it three times. And maybe you take a step backwards somewhere in there that maybe that one wasn't as successful. But you go, you know what? Let's do it again. And let's make it prettier, prettier and better. And through the process, right, sometimes you'll win. Sometimes you'll learn. So you'll be like, oh, that didn't work out so well. Okay, let's do this. Let's tweak this a little bit. And then the cool thing is you can scale it to the level that you want it. Listen, I'm not somebody who wants to scale my thing to, you know, multi-billion dollars. And I've actually had this conversation before with multi-millionaires and, and billionaires, actually. Uh, and I was like, look, I just kind of want a lifestyle thing. I don't like that, you know, I'm at the point in my life where I don't want the headache of scaling this enormous thing. So the cool thing about that is like, you have the power to decide, oh, look, I want to keep it like right around here. This is great. This is, it gives me what I want in life. It doesn't create too many headaches for me outside of, you know, a couple of customer service issues. But even then you can learn how to price your things at such a point that you're not getting people that will create headaches for you on the customer service side. And then when you learn how to create a decent product and you serve people and you over deliver, right? Under promise and over deliver, then you're in a really good spot. But you've been listening to me now for 20 some minutes and I'm saying all of that, everything you've been listening to is simply to remind you that you are capable of this. You have the power. The problem becomes, and maybe I'll put some of the links to other previous episodes, I've talked about this because I want to get into it now. The problem becomes you have an idea and you go, whoa, this is really cool. I know I could do this. And then you talk to the people that you work with and they're all just busy doing all those stuff, you know, the things I was talking about before, trying to move up the corporate ladder, trying to pay their mortgage on time, trying to get to Walmart to shop, to get their groceries, to feed their kids tonight and get them to soccer practice. And so you say, hey, I got this idea. I'm going to do this thing. And they go, who the hell are you to think that you could do that? And you just hear that from one person. That's enough to put a seed of doubt inside you. And then you go home and you're like, ah, you know what? That's a dumb idea. And then you let somebody's two cents talk you out of a million dollar idea. Do not let somebody's two cents talk you out of a million dollar idea. All right. As I would say, don't let blind people proofread your vision. That was the episode that I did before where I talked about this more in depth. So if you have this idea, and I've just told you now that you have the power, so I've reminded you that you have the power, just be careful who you share it with. Share it with other people who are entrepreneurial. Share it with other people who are going places. Share it with other people who are willing to take risks. Share it with other people. Because even if you share it with people who love and care for you, they're going to be like, Oh, isn't that too risky, right? Because they, they, they're not doing it out of malice. They care for you, but they don't want to see you get hurt. But if you're willing to take that risk, and I told you now that you have the power, and you, I'm not saying, you know, burn your boats, you know, pull a Cortez and burn the boats or jump and build your wings on the way down. Like, I think that's kind of dumb, actually, from the beginning. Again, go through what I talked about a little bit. Go through the seed launch. Go through kind of beta testing your stuff. Do the market research. And then you go, oh, okay. And then you get a few people to pay. And you're like, oh, okay, I'm on to something here. That way you haven't lost your shirt. You haven't invested, you know, half a million dollars in a property somewhere to build a restaurant that nobody wants to eat that food in the town that you live in. That's a disaster, right? And something like this, a, a digital product, a course, a membership, a coaching program, low barrier to entry, low investment point, and the margins, again, are fat. You create the content and put it out there, like, what, besides some marketing dollars, 
and some stuff to make it look pretty and deliver it. There's not a lot in there because if you're the person delivering it, right, you're the you, you don't have to pay for a subject matter expert. Now, there's other ways if you wanted to where you can be the knowledge broker and you can do something where you have a deal where you bring in somebody who's the professional to do a lot of stuff, but we'll talk about that some other time. Just remember, right? Remember today as you're listening to me now, you have the power. And there's probably somebody you know in your sphere of influence that needs to hear this. So share this episode with them. Tell them to come listen to this podcast because there's power in numbers. And if you get a couple people in your sphere of influence to start believing in themselves, to start realizing they have the power and they want to do their own thing, and even if you're not partnering on it, maybe you're doing separate things, but you're both doing things, now you have some running buddies. Now you have some pace setters. That's one of the reasons why I go to these big events, and that's one of the reasons why I said yes to this thing I'm going to next week, even though I had to travel, and it's you know kind of last minute, and it's, so travel was expensive, and I'm traveling on the tail end of a Thanksgiving weekend, which could be chaos. But I was like, yes, yes, I have to get around these people because these people are doing things that I'm doing. They're doing it all kind of in their own niches, but they're doing it successfully, and I need to get around people like that on a pretty consistent basis. And frankly, a lot of people in this room are well ahead of where I am. And so there's lots for me to learn. Yes, I can certainly bring some value to that audience, but I'm going to go with a learning learning mindset. And so when you get, when you kind of build that in your sphere of influence, you become the, the Pied Piper, if you will. And you start telling people, hey, you have the power. And you find some people that are like, yeah, you know what? I have this idea. I don't want to try this. Then you can have your own little masterminds. You can have your own little support groups, your own little accountability groups, your own little thing. And that's really cool when that happens. Right? I've seen that kind of grow up uh, organically in some of my own groups. Like I, I wanted to create an atmosphere like that with my digital marketing mentorship group. And we've done that. And then there's some people inside there that have risen up and then they've created their own kind of circles and groups and running buddies, accountability partners, whatever. It's really amazing. But none of that, none of it will happen. And none of that would have happened. If people didn't realize they have the power. Stop abdicating your power to everyone else around you, right? That power resides within you. You have the creative ability to put something really amazing out in the world that can serve a lot of people. And through the internet right now, this last I heard, there's 8 billion people in the planet, on the planet. Roughly half of them have internet access. And roughly half of them speak English. So if you're listening to me and you understand English, clearly you can communicate a little bit in English. So your total addressable market, uh, what's the quick math or what did I say? Eight and then we cut that in half, and then we cut that in half. So I don't know, you got two, like 2 billion people out there that could potentially be your thing, depending on what it is you're selling, especially if you're selling in wealth, uh, health, or relationships, those bigger categories. But if you niche it down, again, you don't even need that. You know, there's people who will tell me, ah, you know, I, I asked three people and they don't want to do it. I'm like, listen, there's like another 7.999 billion people out there. Go ask a few more. The goal is to find 1,000, find the 1,000 true fans initially. And then if you need to change the math for you, that's fine. Maybe you want to find 2,000 true fans, or maybe you want to find 100 true fans who pay you $10,000 a year. I don't know. Change the math however you want. There's plenty of people who are spending $10,000 to $20,000. I know people are spending $100,000 on coaching programs and courses and things like that. They're out there, yeah. Just because the people in your town or the people in your church or the people in your PTO or the other parents in your kids' soccer team aren't doing it doesn't mean there aren't people out there that are doing it and want it. And that's, again, why you get frustrated. You ask the people close to you, and they're like, wait, first of all, who the heck are you? And second of all, like, no, that's dumb. Why would I do that? Remember, those people that you're asking advice of, I told you they're kind of stuck in the rut themselves, but also, you know, there's this crazy data. I don't remember the specifics, but, you know, something about, a vast majority of people after they've left high school have never read a book again, right? So people aren't doing like personal development and growth and don't have an entrepreneurial mindset. Let me try that again. Entrepreneurial mindset, right? So of course, when you ask them, hey, you want to try this thing or check this out? They'll be like, no. But if you went to your PTO or your your kids like back to school night for like little tiny kids, or, you know, preschool or something, and you're like, hey, you know what? I think I figured out how to make Johnny sleep through the night without, you know, all these other things. And it works like 90% of the time. Who might be interested in learning how we do that? You're going to get a whole bunch of parents who are like, hell yeah. Cool. I'm doing a call on Zoom Thursday night. Be there. All right. And there we go. 
and now you're showing other parents how to get their kids to sleep through the night. Listen, it could be something as simple as that, but you all know if you've been there how powerful that is when you can actually get a full night of sleep when your kids aren't keeping you up all night, right? That's, that's literally life-changing. And I'm telling you, you have the power to affect change like that in your sphere of influence and actually across the globe at this point. You just have to remember that you have the power and you have to deploy it. And when you do, that most definitely will help you unleash your awesome on the world. See ya. Thanks for listening to Unleash the Awesome. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please share us on your favorite social media platforms using hashtag UnleashAwesome.